Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, so uh, today I want to talk about the uh, uh, price in the arithmetic progressions. So I think this will be the final chapter of the uh, my own analytic number theory lecture. Uh, so if you haven't seen my analytic number theory, that I will post the uh, uh, I will post the link. Uh, I will post link below. Yeah, so this is my uh, final lecture, uh, basically final topic. So I will spend next three videos to describe the detail of the, the famous theorem of the Richardet. So th th this first one will just give you some basic idea. And then also, yeah, so we will uh, step by step. Okay, so uh, the main theorem that I'm gonna to prove in this, uh, this series of lectures is the famous the Richardet theorem. Okay, so the rich net, the rich, uh, yeah, the, the rich net. Okay, so the idea is that let's say given Q, uh, which is a positive integer, and A is uh, another uh, number, basically another uh, integer, and then such that uh, Q and A uh, is uh, co-prime to each other. And uh, now you can consider sets, so let's say QN plus A, Let's say this is set and such that n from let's say zero, one to two. Okay, and uh yeah, so this is a q is one, so this is a set. So the Richard's theorem says that uh, omega has infinite primes, infinite prime num prime numbers. Okay, so this is very non-trivial. Okay, so for example, uh for for example, you can try to consider let's say omega is a four n plus one. Right, so zero, one, two. Okay, so that means that you get one, five, nine, thirteen, da, 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 da. and then there are infinite primes. Okay, so there are infinite number, which is prime. For example, five is prime, thirteen is prime. Okay, and uh, you can consider omega is four and plus three. Okay, which you get uh, three, seven, uh, eleven, fifteen, right? So you can see seven, eleven are prime, and there are infinite primes. Okay, so now, so now if the uh, probably this is what what you what you expect that you can try to prove this form plus one form plus three using some elementary method, but the which direction I say more direction I say is oh I mean whatever q and plus a, uh, where if a q is zero uh, a q is a comprising each other there will be infinite price. Okay, so for example, uh, right for uh, for example six n plus five that kind of form six n plus one, thirteen n plus. 11 all these kind of have infinite price so this is very uh, non-trivial part that uh, non-trivial proof okay so this is the this is a simple one but the another theorem that the one can uh, is more advanced is basically one can use the analytic number theory version so analytic number theory version which i i hope to prove uh, after uh, three series of video is that you can consider sum over one over p, which is p less or equal to x, and the p is a mark q. So I usually write a and the uh, uh, bracket q. This is a mod q, okay? It's basically uh, approximately to be one over phi of q, log log x, okay? Log log x plus the uh, big O one. Okay, so this is similar as the, the, the so-called uh, Mertens uh, results. Basically, it's your sum over one over p, p that's equal to x. This is log log x. Okay, you can prove this by prime number theorem because you know that uh, each p n will be approximate n log n. Okay, so you can just approximate this by summation of one over n log n, and then this is just approximate x one over x log x dx and the sum from let's say one to x, which is x bar bar. Okay. So this is the standard Mertens results. So you can use Mertens results. I mean, it's just, I just remind you guys that Mertens results that you can prove Mertens results using prime number theorem. And for this one, this is more advanced, right? This is all your five function. So if you plug this at Q equals to, uh, I mean, <clears throat> let's say you put Q equals to one or something that you get a log of X, right? So this is the generalization of the, the, of the Mertens results. Okay, so in order to prove these kind of things, we need we need some basic idea of the uh, group representation. Okay. Okay, maybe I use black is a uh, more more comfortable. 
Okay, so group representation. So I will uh, assume that you know enough group representation. So if you don't know that, you can check out. So uh, check out my uh, check out my list of the group representation. Basically, what we need in this uh, in this context is that we that uh, we only need the abelian group. Okay, I should say finite abelian group. So we only need the irreducible representation of finite abelian group, uh, which is one dimensional. Uh, I will uh, describe the detail. Okay, so in order to prove that kind of things, we need to use the L, the the ratio that character. Okay, so let me just spend some time talking about the ratio that character. Okay, so usually when you heard of character, yeah, you think of oh, group representation, right? So quickly remind you guys that if you got some uh, group representation, let's say row from G to GLV, and then you can take a uh, whatever group and uh, uh, and act on, uh, sorry, so the character of that representation act on any group element will be trace of row of G. Okay, so this character is actually this character. So I, I will explain the detail. So let me just quickly, uh, define the derivative character. So let's say Q is going to turn zero. And then the first one, the derivative character is, uh, let's say for every integer, you go to the complex number, okay? So actually the first condition is that uh, uh, X is periodic in Q, okay? So S is periodic in Q. Uh, the second is that uh, S is uh, this chi, sorry, I, okay, I, I call it chi. Okay, chi. chi is complete multiplicative, which means that chi of an M is a chi of N, chi of N. Okay, and the third one is that, uh, and also I write chi of one is one. Okay, and third condition that is chi of N must be non-zero uh, if, uh, if and only if and Q is one. Okay, so if NQ is a coprime, that the uh, chi of N must be non zero, and the chi is multiplicative, and the chi of 1 is 1. And uh, uh, I mean, this is trivial, right? Because chi of 1 is chi of 1 square. So if chi of one, 1 is 0, then uh, by this one, then everything should be zero. By this one, then everything should be 0. And which contradicts with the third one. Okay, so uh, you might think, oh, probably this is not, a, not, a, not related to this, right? But I mean, you can try to think a little bit. And uh, then you will understand, okay? Uh, okay, how should I start? Okay, so uh, let me say, take some example. Uh, for example, Q equals to one, right? So if Q is equals to one, then uh, you get the chi of one, and the chi of one, one, and the chi of two must be periodic. So it must be one plus one, which is still one. So the only chi, the only original character is one. Okay. So let's consider Q equals to two. I just do a little bit. And then after that, I will describe all the character uh, using a group representation. So if chi equals to two, it, uh, uh, your one is one, right? Uh, what about your two? Uh, two must be zero, right? Because two is, two is not comprised to two, right? So two, how about three? <laughs> Okay, but notice that uh, three times three will be nine, which is one. Okay, so which is one. So we tell you that chi of three squared is one. So chi of three has two choice plus or minus one. Okay, so you got two characters. Oh, sorry, right. So you you got, uh, okay, so you got the, uh, hmm. Okay, so you might uh, think that uh, your chi of three can be uh, plus or minus one, right? But remember that uh, this is this need to be periodic, right? So if chi of one is one, then chi of three must be chi of uh, one plus two, which is uh, still uh, chi of one. Okay, so it's still one. Okay, so there's only one character, only one character. Okay, so it's still uh, the same as this. Okay, so <laughs> probably very strange. Okay, so let's say q equals three, okay? And now Q equals three is interesting, right? Because chi of one is one, but uh, let's say chi of three is zero, right? and the chi of two squared is chi of four, which is which is one plus one, right? That's a one plus one, so it's one. Right? So chi of two can be plus or minus one. Okay. So now this will give you two choice. Okay. So well, uh, this will give you two cho uh two choice. If chi of two is one, then everything will be one. If chi of two is minus one, then you get another character. 
Okay, so there are two characters. Okay, the first character is trivial one, which is I call it chi zero, which is a trivial one, which is a which is all one for every n. And I get another chi of n that I call it uh, let's say if uh so if n is zero mod three, you get uh, zero. If n is one mod three, you get one. If n is a uh, two mod three, you get minus one. Okay, there are two characters that uh, you can try to describe. Okay, and uh, yeah, so let me just talk about the theorem about a character. Okay. Uh, okay. So the first, the first theorem is that uh, the first theorem, uh, the first results will be uh, chi of n is either zero or uh, roots of unity, roots of uh, phi q roots unity. Uh, two roots. Or should we say uh, phi q roots of unity? Okay. Okay. So this proof is trivial, right? Because if n is mod q, n is not mod, uh not compared to q, which is one, uh, zero. Otherwise, that uh, otherwise that uh, I mean, let's say let's say let's say you choose a, which is uh, compared to q. Okay, a, right? And you can try to do the multiplicative. You can try to uh, let's say time five q. Okay, you get x chi of a of five q, and by the Euler theorem, so Euler Euler theorem tell you that. Uh, a to the any number of the q will be one mod q. Okay, so if you put in, you get the one mod q, which by the periodic must be chi of one, which is one. Okay, so this tells you that chi of a is a phi q roots of unity. Okay, so uh, probably this gives you a hint of the group representation. Okay, and the uh, Okay, uh, the second, uh, second, sec uh, okay, so the second theorem that uh, I think is simple uh, is that uh, now uh, I, I can let chi one times chi two, let's say defined on x on n will be chi one n, chi two n. Okay, so your uh, this will form a group. So uh, you can check. Uh, this is a group structure. On character, a set of characters set of character okay so very simple uh because of the principal character so so-called principal character means that uh so let me just so there's a idea called principal character uh, which is a trivial basically x zero n is one for every n so these principal characters will be the identity element and then you can define the inverse uh the inverse of the uh, chi inverse of n, you can check is chi of n uh, complex complex conjugate. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, okay. So now uh, we can start to say. Uh, let me just. We can start to uh, describe the characters. Okay, so the first question I want to answer is how many characters? Okay, so the answer is uh, five cube. Okay, so the reason is very simple, right? So now uh, we can use a group representation. So that's uh, original, I got Z, right? So I can uh, first uh, do the, I can first do Z on the Q basis. So I get Z of Q, which is a sticky group. So I should I should write this as z mod q z. Okay, and I take a multiplicative element. Okay, so I get a I, I get the I get the uh abelian group, uh, which is abelian group. Okay, and the z mod q z has the order uh multiplicative group has order five q, and I can consider the one dimensional representation. So one dimensional rep. Okay, on uh, this group. So let's call it chi, which is exactly. Okay, so this guy is exactly the character itself, right? So this guy, you can see that this is, uh, first is one mark, which is chi of one is one, and the multiplicative due to the, the second property, and also, uh, also what? 
but also it's periodic in Q. So easy to check that this guy, this group representation chi is actually the what, what we get. Okay, so how many phi of Q? So simple, simple, simple results, right? Because these guys are abelian group. So abelian group, every finite, uh, every irreducible representation of abelian group is one dimension. So if the group has five Q, there are exactly five Q of them, okay? So very trivial. So this approved just using the uh, group representation theory, group representation of finite abelian group. Okay, so I skip the proof because uh, I suppose you know the group representation, so I skip. Okay, so let me just talk about the, the results that uh, so okay, so re relation, I uh, should say the relation between character and the proof just using the group representation. Okay, so remember in the group representation, we got some something called the short orthogonality. So it's also connality relation. Okay, so once you know this and then you know the character is just a representation on the multiplicative group mark Q, then you can write down the following relation. Okay, so the first one that I, I skipped the proof, right? Proof just related to just using a group representation is that uh, suppose you first uh, sum A from one to Q. Okay, so you can check this is trivial, right? Because if X is the, uh, the chi is the uh, principal character, then you should get one, 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 right? You get five Q, okay? Otherwise it's zero, okay. Okay, so this first relation, Second relation is that uh, if you sum over chi, let's say uh, a equals to, uh, let's say let's say you sum over chi, and uh, a, a count a and the chi is one mark q. Uh, okay, so let's let's so let's let's so I so I should say this. This is sum over chi over a, where it's all the characters. Okay, and you sum over all the characters. So let me just write this chi of a, and all the characters. Okay, then the, this is also called negative relation. So you could also get phi of Q. If A is one mark Q, otherwise A gets zero. Okay. Okay, and the third one is a, another also negative that uh, if you take, let's say, uh, chi of one A, chi of two A, one bar. This is also a negative relation. Uh, if, if you take all the, let's say, A from one to Q, right? A from one to Q is just all the elements of the multiplicative group will give you 5q if uh, they are the same, otherwise it's zero. Okay, so this is exactly shows or so shows also negative, right? Remember that uh, in the usual group representation, if you define two characters, usually you will define to be one over g, summation g belongs to g that chi one g, chi two g inverse, right? This will be delta of this chi one, chi two. So this is the usual group uh, shows lemma. So if you put if you're using the chi one to be a and chi two to be a bar, and then you sum from a one to q, which is a multiplicative group element, it should give you one over five q, right? So it becomes this. Okay, and the third, the first one is that uh, if you is the column also called entity. So usually this guy is called row also called entity, and then this guy will be called column also called entity if you learn enough about group representation, where you sum all over the character, you get the uh, 5q, zero, if a1 is a2 mark q, and the a1 q is one. Okay, so end. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is, so I skip all this proof. So I believe you know this, okay. Okay, so once we have this, then uh, let me just talk about the uh, final results that, uh, that we can prove, theorem. Okay, the first one is that if I let's I want to uh, investigate a summatory function of let's say this is x, somebody give me my character and I want to use the I want to get the growth of this. Okay, so theorem says that uh, the first theorem says that this guy is less or equal to five q if a uh, chi is not principal character. Okay, so yeah, uh, this first one is simple, right? Because uh, one can use this one, right? Sum of one of Q is five Q, otherwise it's zero. Okay, so that means uh, for A from one to Q that you already get zero, right? 
you will either get zero for every one to Q. So this guy is, uh, this guy can, oh, can at most accumulate five Q terms because each one is a five, each one is a root of unity, right? So you at most get five Q. Okay, so proof is a uh, trivial. I just, I just described the proof. Okay. Uh, now the second is one. Second one is that if chi is chi zero, then uh, I want to estimate this, right? So I, I want to estimate this. Minus this five Q divided by Q times X is a, uh, S will equal to two phi of Q, X squared equal to one. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's let's see uh, why this is true. Uh, what well, this is true? Uh, okay, so let's let's prove this. Uh, why well, why why we need this right? Because after that we need to bound using the derivative series to bound this guy. So it's very uh, good if we already know the summary function groups. Uh, okay, so let's prove. All right, so I know that chi is a periodic in Q. So that uh, if I sum chi of n and that's equal to x, then we then then I, I should get what I should get let's say periodic in q right. So I can take x divided by the floor function of q. Let's say s plus r right. So s is a summation of chi of a a from one to q, and which r is what r is just the summation a from one to q, which is every turn right at most chi of n. So this is bounded by this. Okay, so this guy is at most five Q, right? So okay, okay. Mm. Okay, then uh, we got an answer, right? Because this guy minus this, this guy minus this one, at most two two of R, right? So proof. Because you write this minus this and then take absolute value, then you get at most R. Right, because x uh, is less or equal to, yeah. Okay, so s is less or equal to 5q, right? So if you minus this, then you at most get, get this one. Okay. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is what uh, we, these two, these two, right? This one and uh, these, uh, these two are the important thing that we need to use in a future video. So next video that I, since we already know, know everything, right? So we can de uh, define a derivative at L function, uh, which is defined to be chi of N and S and from one to infinity, L chi of X, S, right? So this guy is a similar to a Riemann zeta function. If you take Q to be one, let's say you fix Q. Right, if you take Q to be one, that you get zeta function. So we can use the analytic property of this derivative L function, and then we take some limit, and then we get an answer. See you guys next videos. Oh, by the way, subscribe to my channel. Shit. <laughs>